The Jailalitha government replies to a PIL challenging its freebie scheme. In the response, Tamil Nadu says it was only welfare oriented. A 36 year old engineer and student at the IIT Madras campus commits suicide, even as the reasons behind his death remain unknown. Police broke the court case. The state police arrests former DMK top man Ponmudi in Vidupuram. He was accused of grabbing a huge stretch of land meant for a school. Andhra Pradesh's former top man K. Rosaya has been sworn in as Tamil Nadu's new governor. The Living Index of Cities does not figure Nama Chennai in its list. Despite the beautification projects, what will it take up for the city to get there? Mixed martial arts or a killer defense mechanism crash courses in the art may render you more harm than benefit. This Eid, the message of goodwill and forgiveness takes on a national flavor. And allow this salt and peppered actor to take you off your feet on his 50th venture. It's Mangatha Mania across Chennai. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to NDTV Hindu on your primetime bulletin headlines. Now, I'm Evelyn Matthew, joining you at 8 with the festivity this Eid ul Fitr, the Mangata mania and the political controversies and fireworks as well. A quick scan of the national headlines as well for you. The BCCI needs to be more accountable to the public. Ajay Makan hits out after his sports bill is rejected. Parliament's Standing Committee on the Lokpal Bill set for changes. Manish Tiwari pulls out as Team Anna has a problem with him. An exclusive interview with Jagan Mohan Reddy on why, despite money laundering cases against him, he feels he won't be arrested. After Harain Pandya's wife says his murder should be reinvestigated, the state government says the CBI should give its report to the Supreme Court. And parts of the next instalment of James Bond may be shot at Sarojini Nagar Market in Delhi. Our top story this evening, freebies are no spoiling but actual benefit. The Jayalalitha government has justified its scheme of free distribution of grinders and laptops to students as one that would promote the welfare of the downtrodden. This was in fact in a reply to the Supreme Court when the state government's affidavit came after the apex court sought the state's response in a public interest litigation that challenged the freebies in the AI DMK election manifesto. Tamil Nadu's affidavit filed in the apex court says that every political party is entitled to express its policies through manifestos during the polls. It also said that the implementation of the manifesto could not be faulted and that these schemes were meant to promote the welfare of the people and raise the standards of living. The Supreme Court is now expected to take up the case on the 2nd of September. Another DMK top minister has come under the land grab heat. The state police today arrested former higher education minister Ponmudi in Virupuram. He was first taken to the Tindivanam court, after which he was led to the Karalaw jail. Ponmudi has been accused of grabbing close to 61,000 square feet of land that was actually earmarked for a school by a Transport Employees Association. A complaint was lodged by the chairman of the Residents Welfare Association. A trust associated to the minister has also come under the scanner. In fact, the secretary has already been arrested while the chairman is still known to be absconding. Ponmudi is the fourth former DMK minister to be arrested. Already eight leaders of the party and hundreds of cadre are behind bars on land grab charges. While Jalalita has said that these arrests are based on genuine complaints, the DMK maintains that this is political vendetta. Paramatin and Vimatum, Chutikata Vimir. 
Back to news from the city. A 36-year-old engineer, also a student at the IIT Madras, has committed suicide by swallowing poison in his hostel room. The man is an employee with the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bangalore and is survived by his wife and two children and comes from the Tiruvatur area. The body has been moved to the General Hospital and as the family members have been informed, the police are still investigating. The reasons are still unknown. And the Pradesh's former Chief uh, Minister K. Rosaya has now been sworn in as Tamil Nadu's new governor. In fact, uh, he was sworn in today. The Madras High Court Chief Justice M. Y. Iqbal administered the oath of office at the Rajabhavan. He succeeds Surjit Singh Barnala. The brief function was attended by the Chief Minister Jay Lalitha and her cabinet colleagues, among others. 78 year old Rosaya, a veteran Congress leader of Andhra Pradesh, brings with him a vast political and ministerial experience, having served as Chief Minister from the 3rd of September 2009 till the 24th of November 2010. Besides being a minister in successive Congress governments in the state since 1979, several well known personalities from Andhra Pradesh, including actor, politician, Chiranjeevi, industrialist Subirami Reddy and many others were also present at that ceremony. Now, according to the recently released Global Livability Survey conducted by the Economic Intelligence Unit, not a single Indian city figured among the best. The only Indian city ranked was Mumbai at 113, but as among the world's worst places to live in. Now, Chennai does not figure as well, even though these uh, successive governments in the last few years have taken up several beautification projects. But on the whole, the cities were surveyed on the basis of political and social stability, healthcare, environment, education and infrastructure. When we come back, learn the art of self-defence but at your own risk. We tell you, when you need, why you need to tread with utmost care when we come back.